Hey, uh, before we sit down, can we just thank the Worship Collective? We've been uh, excited about them this year. You may have a seat. Have a seat real quick. Um, I get the privilege of uh, introducing someone in just a second to you that uh, is a bit of an introduction to uh, over 4,000 incoming freshmen, obviously no introduction to the rest of the school. I do want to let the freshmen know that uh, when I introduce President Falwell to you here in just a second, there's a way that we'd like to welcome him when he walks up on stage. The sophomores and the juniors and the seniors will teach the freshmen how we do that, all right, here in just a second. Uh, we have a little way that we'd like to let Jerry know we're excited he's in the house, right? So that's going to be a lot of fun. I do want to say they've had a pretty busy summer, the Falwell family. Um, uh, among other things, if you follow them on social media, uh, you know that there's been a couple of new additions in the house. And I do see, by the way, uh, Ms. Falwell, Becky, can we welcome Becky in the house, by the way? So glad to have you here with us. <laughs> and sitting right beside Becky is, uh, are Wes and Laura. Uh, just so great to have you in the house as well. And of course, just the whole family's right there. Can we just welcome the entire family? And um, the reason... The reason that I met, uh, mentioned um, Wes and Laura in particular is that uh, they had some really good news. As a matter of fact, Becky, would you mind? I know you're going to probably give me a demotion later, all right? But can you, can you come up on stage just for a second because we do have something for you. Come on, give it up for Becky just real quick. And while she's coming up, let me just go ahead and tell you. Uh, they uh, posted this, so it's not a big surprise, but Wes and Laura are expecting their very first child. Isn't that exciting? We got some pictures to show. Let's put those pictures up. That's pretty awesome. And then, wow. That's pretty controversial. And uh, <laughs> that's pretty awesome. Here she is. Come on. Hey, Jerry, would you come up as well? Come on. Give it up for our first lady and our president. <laughs> Well, welcome. That's exciting. We have a gift for you. We know that you're going to be um, apparently Mimi and Pops. That's what you're going with. Yep. That's pretty awesome. Yep. And so uh, can, we, uh, can we just bring the gift out for them? We have a tiny little gift we wanted to give you, but uh, here it is. We, so we figure since you're grandparents now, there's a little baby Falwell rocking chair. And then right beside that is Laura's and Wes's <laughs> and Mimi. And pops, come on, give it up, everybody. That's going to be pretty awesome. You sit on it? Wow, you're already sitting down. I'm not ready to retire yet. I'm not going to sit down. <laughs> We're not ready. Thank you very to much. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. So, uh, speaking of additions, you didn't just have uh, a baby edition. You actually uh, got a couple of new puppies. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Okay. Yeah. Last Christmas, we got a golden retriever puppy. Is there and our family fell in love with him, and a tragic accident happened this summer, and he died. She, and so, died. she died, sorry. So we were all extremely, extremely upset and sad, and Caroline and Jerry got together and decided that to replace our one puppy that we lost, we'd get two puppies instead. <laughs> so that, that was a picture of our puppies, uh, Sandy and Chester. Sandy and Chester. Uh -huh. uh, we actually have a, like a 10 second little video that I think you, you posted on Instagram. Let's watch this, this is, this is fun. This is my attempt at teaching them to fetch. And if you watch, <laughs> <laughs> they're still struggling. They get distracted and fight with each other and the ball gets left in the yard, so. They're a lot of fun. We've really enjoyed them this summer. I was going to bring them to Combo this morning, but she wouldn't let me. So, anyway. <laughs> right. I wish you'd brought them to Combo. Yeah. Uh, one more question for you before you yeah. uh, introduce our guest, uh, President Falwell. This summer, I know you were very busy uh, traveling as well, and you traveled representing our university, uh, even internationally. You uh, went to Greece, and I was hearing great news when you came back from uh, just you leveraging your relationships with a, with a person there that was hosting you to help persecuted Christians that are in that region. Can you tell us a little bit about that trip? Yeah, it's, it's a trip like we've never had before. Um, the person who invited us owns the largest, his name is Tarfik Khoury, largest construction company in the Middle East. And he took us on his 136 foot yacht. And I, I've never seen anything like it, 10 person crew, and we had a, he had a 58 foot yacht follow along for his kids. But anyway, it was, it was um, 
he wanted to talk to us about giving scholarships to Christian, he's from Palestine, but his company's based in Greece, but his whole purpose for inviting us was to, he wants to give scholarships to Christians in the Middle East to get engineering degrees through our online program and stay in the Middle East. He thinks that the key to, the key to success in the Middle East is to keep the Christians there, not have them leave as refugees because of ISIS and, and all the radicals because he thinks there'll be nothing but darkness left. So he's gonna spend a lot of his own money to make that happen. And so it was, um, you know, normally we, we go down to the beach for a few days, so it was, uh, we've been married 30 years this year, so I've, she made me go. I, I, <laughs> It was, an ele- it was an 11 day trip, it's the longest vacation we've ever taken without the kids, and, and I go crazy being away from work that long, but she made me go, so I, she's the boss, we did it, and it was fun. And, uh, but it, that, you, you wouldn't believe it, I mean, you leave your room for two hours, you come back, they folded your clothes for you, and they, they, they have a chef. We offer that at the <laughs> Commons, Commons 3 offers that <laughs> service. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're... The people in the annex come and do it. <laughs> we, we, were, we were definitely suffering for Jesus, that's, that's for right. sure. Hey, for, thanks for doing that. And uh, what, I, what, I, what I do appreciate is that uh, while you were gone, you weren't just vacationing, you also worked and, and again leveraged your relationships to do a lot of good in the life of persecuted Christians. In the the whole group will be here for a football game this weekend. They're going to do some big things for Liberty. So. That's awesome. Good summer. Hey, uh, 30 yep. years. That's awesome. I think Jerry had some flowers for you, and he was going to uh, give them to you. I didn't Where buy are those? Anyway. Where are those flowers? Are they bringing those it. up? I see them over there. Yeah. I'll go get them. No. I'll be right back. <laughs> here you go. All right, all right. I'm not giving it to I'll you. I'll pretend like I bought them. Here you go, sweetie. Yeah. There you go. We also got some for you, Laura. Congratulations. Today we're kicking off a new marketing campaign called We the Champions. It's something our, our marketing team has been working on for, for months now, and it's, it's just to, to amplify Liberty's mission of training champions for Christ. And we have three honored guests with us today. William Byron is here. He's the race. He was only 16, year, 16 years old when Liberty first started sponsoring him. He, unlike most young race car drivers who learn how to drive in a, in a go-kart, he learned how to do it online. So it was fitting that he chose to come to Liberty. He went to our online academy. He's now in our online, online program at Liberty. He's, he's, uh, he's moved up from the, the, the late model racing series to the K&N Pro Series. He's won four championships. He um, then, then was in the Camping World Truck Series, where he was, where he was named Rookie of the Year. He, he, he's the, uh, now in the Xfinity Series, and next, next year he'll be moving up to the full, they call it the Monster Energy Cup Series, the top series of NASCAR. Just unbelievable. Unbelievable achievement for somebody his age. I think he's 19, right? 19. Just um, almost unprecedented. And, and we, uh, we were down this summer at the NASCAR Museum in, Dar- in uh, Charlotte and with uh, Rick Hendricks, who's also with us today. He's, he, we, unveiled, we, we unveiled a race car that William will be driving this weekend at Darlington that's painted exactly as Rick's son, Ricky, Ricky Jr. Uh, drove the same car he drove before he passed away in a tra- tragic accident in 2004. And it was a very moving ceremony. We were so honored to be there. But we also have with us today, Jeff Gordon. I'm, not, I'm sure you've heard of him. He's a three-time Daytona 500 winner. He's winner of a record five Brickyard 400s at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. William, by the way, is the youngest to ever win at at the Brickyard. He did that this year. But Jeff is third on the all-time NASCAR Cup Series wins list with 93, I don't know what 93 now is, but a broadcast, he was a 93 now with a broadcaster with Fox Sports. But but, uh, 
but, but our guest, other guest, Rick Hendricks, is working with Liberty to put together, you know, I started getting word from one of Rick's employees several years ago, who's a distant relative of mine, that Rick was just so pleased with the quality of the employees that he had hired who had graduated from Liberty. He owns 140 retail franchises, um, car dealerships all over the country. And so we've worked with, with Rick to develop a automotive dealership management program inside our business school. And our hope is to send a lot more employee, quality employees Rick's way. And Rick is so kind to, to work with us in that project. But he was, he was raised on a farm not only two hours from here, near Palmer Springs, Virginia. He's um, the owner of 12-time and defending NASCAR Cup Series champions Hendricks Motorsports. He's ranked second on NASCAR's all-time Cup Series victory list. He leads all owners in modern era wins, NASCAR's all-time leader in ownership cha owners' championships, and uh, as I said, he's chairman of, uh, of uh, Hendrick Automotive, Automotive Group, which owns the 140 dealerships. But we're just so proud to be in partnership with Rick Hendrick, and we, uh, it, just last year, his dealership generated over $9 billion in revenue, sold more than 200,000 cars, serviced over 2.6 million cars. Rick is a leukemia survivor, a philanthropist. He established the not-for-profit Hendricks Family Foundation in 2016. He's inducted into the NASCAR Hall of Fame in January of 2017 and a recipient of the Automotive News Lifetime Achievement Award and the prestigious Horatio Alger Award. Now I want you to watch a video about our three guests today, and then they'll come up and discuss all of the projects that we're working together with Hendricks on. Thank you. Career win number one for William Byron comes to Iowa. Tonight, it's going to be all about a celebration. The first time he's ever been to Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Willie Dale to the Holy Ball. William Byron wins in Indy. Here goes the pass. Gordon making a move on the inside of Bernhardt. The Hendricks stable giving it their best for Rick Hendricks here today. First, second, and third. Jeff Gordon has just become the youngest man ever to win the Daytona 500. Come on, put your hands together. Wow. So last night, the big news came down. It was amazing to hear that uh, you're going to get to uh, just have number 24. You're going to get to you know, carry the great tradition uh, of the legend. How does that feel, William? That was Ricky Bobby's car, wasn't it? <laughs> It, uh, it feels incredible. It's, um, you know, it obviously means a lot to Jeff and Mr. Hendrick and uh, to have 93 wins like they had in that car and, and the Rainbow Warriors paint scheme. And Jeff was almost about my age, really, when he started racing. Um, I'm 19, and he, I think you were 19 or 20. 19 or 20. Yeah. And uh, so it's, it's a cool, cool thing to, to follow in those footsteps and just very thankful for the opportunity and uh, very blessed. I mean, man, we, we love that you get to represent us and represent Christ, obviously, first and foremost, but that's awesome. So, Jeff, uh, you know, a guy like this just looks to you as a mentor and as an example. Uh, take us back. Uh, you know, you're, you're one of the most uh, celebrated, you know, honestly, athletes in all of sports, but if you could go back to being a 19-year-old, Jeff Gordon, what kind of advice would you give to him? What kind of advice would you give to a lot of us who Obviously, might not be, uh, might get a couple of speeding tickets, but might not be in the race car business. <laughs> but we, we want to be good at what we do. We want to be successful at what we do. And so you've been very successful in your field. What are some pieces of advice you'd give to us? Well, first of all, it's exciting to be here. Thank you for having us. Uh, that, that, yeah. I mean, what a great feeling it is when, when you come out and see the introduction that you guys do and, and get this crowd pumping and, and going. And uh, I think that's the first thing that I, I would say, and, and that reminded me of, of, of what I would tell William is, have fun, man. You, you, you know, life, you have to enjoy it. And, and he is on this tremendous rise. You, you heard Jerry talk about the different series that he's been just going to, and, and he's on this uphill climb, and he's experiencing tremendous success. He's got a lot of talent. 
pretty, pretty good looking young man here. Uh, I think he's gonna do okay. Uh, so I, I'd first just say enjoy this ride, enjoy every moment, have fun. Now, I know that Liberty has an incredible online uh, school that he's in involved with, but after being here on this campus, I'd say maybe stay in school, maybe come back to the campus here. This looks like a pretty good time here, William, but seriously, um, as far as the racing, the business side, I, I and Rick taught, has taught me a lot about, about life and business, but you get out of it what you put into it. And, and, you know, my parents instilled in me at a young age that, uh, you know, if, if you want to be successful at something, you've got to work really hard at it. No matter what skill set you have, sure, it's awesome if at a young age, like William, like myself, you can find that you have something special that helps you become a race car driver and that you're good at it. But there's a lot of really good race car drivers out there. There's not a lot of great race car drivers out there. And what separates them from anybody else is that they want it more than anybody. And, and when you're up head to head with another competitor, you know the ones that are willing to just about do anything to get that trophy. And, and that's because they, they have the passion, the desire, and they're willing to work as hard or harder than anybody else out there to be the absolute best that they can be. And I mean, I've already seen that in William, so I, I don't think it's gonna be a problem, but I'm certainly excited that he's gonna be driving that 24 and representing the 24 extremely well, but uh, also he's gonna have a lot of success. That's awesome. Rick, it's such an honor to have you here. Um, we, um, obviously, you're just a legend, and uh, we want to go back to just your humble beginnings. You grew up, like President Falwell said, just a few hours from here, lived in Virginia, North Carolina, and, uh, and today you have over 100 car dealerships, just a, an incredibly successful person in life. Uh, and these are, in one sense, two of your employers. So these are two guys that work with you on a day-to-day -day basis. I I'd love to hear your story first for just a minute, and then we want to hear what you look for, for people to be on your team. Uh, because I think these, these men and women are looking for jobs, you know, all throughout the world. And they want to know what a high level leader is looking for as they're looking to be hired into something that changes the world like your company does. Well, I, I did grow up, I don't know if there are any, anybody in here that grew up on a tobacco farm, but um, I, I knew what I didn't want to do in life, but uh, no, it was, uh, my mom and dad taught me a lot about taking care of people. You had to rely on your neighbors. Uh, you know, you're, you grew up in a small community. Faith is a big deal. My, my dad was a superintendent of Sunday school. My mother taught Sunday school. Uh, my brother went 14 years without missing a Sunday. I went 11. And, uh, but we had that, that, that homegrown faith and working with each other. And I raced uh, with my dad on the weekends. I grew up a gearhead. I loved cars and I loved, uh, loved speed. And I went to school in Raleigh and worked in a service station and uh, actually got an opportunity to meet a dealer and went to work for him. I was 23 years old and running a store and then I got my own opportunity. And uh, when I was 26, I was the youngest Chevrolet dealer ever. And, uh, and God's just blessed me, but People skills are so important, taking care of people and treating people the right way. Uh, you know, we started with five employees in the car business. We started with five employees in the motorsports business. And I raced all of my life, but, uh, and we almost closed the doors in our sixth race and we uh, got a sponsor and the rest is history. Now we have 600 people and 600,000 square feet at the racing complex. And we started with five people in Bennettsville, South Carolina in 76, and today we're 11,000. And, uh, you know, I, I, I have to say that uh, just for surrounding yourself with good people that believe like you believe with a good moral compass and a good foundation, um, you know, then the racing things, I look back and I can't believe it really happened. But, uh, you know, it's been, we've been very blessed. We're one race away from uh, 250, and uh, so we're, hopefully we'll get that done. Jeff retired before he won that race for me, but, uh, but we're really excited about William. But I want to talk to you just, just a second. You asked me about people in the business. Uh, we are so fortunate to be associated with the school. Uh, a fellow by the name of Dan DeHoss is one of my most successful 
managers. He tried to recruit up here, and he found a young guy that was on the football team. Uh, his, his name is Brandon Apom. I don't know if anybody knows Brandon, but uh, he, he went on to, I think he was a walk-on in football, and he ended up being All-American. And he came to us three and a half years ago and started on the bottom, and he, is, he was tied for the top Mazda deal in the U.S., running one of the most successful stores in the country. And this year we have, I think, 10 students in the, in the Georgia area. We had 11 uh, interns this year. And the, the quality of the people, the work, work ethic, the attention to detail, the want to work, want to learn, and we've had zero loss. Uh, all of the, the students that have come to our place in Atlanta are still there. And, uh, you know, it's, it's an amazing opportunity for us to join with the school. And uh, we're so excited about it. And I can tell you folks out there, in the turnover in the industry, in almost any industry, is probably 30% a year. And uh, the world needs students like you. They need, we need all we can get that have a tremendous foundation, a great work ethic, that want to learn, that want to be a leader, that want to run a company. Uh, you, you know, when you show up, I, I tell all our people, you got to do three things. You got to show up, you got to show up on time, and you got to show up on time with your game face on. And I can tell you, uh, the students that have come out of this school that work in our company are the very best that we have anywhere. So I'm, uh, I challenge you, and, and hopefully I have an opportunity to, to work with you one day. So it's an amazing, amazing school, and, uh, and the world is yours. I mean, we need you. Our country needs you. Uh, it's just you are the guiding light. Uh, you, you can help us stabilize our country, pull our country together. Uh, that's a long speech, but, man, we need good people, and uh, you're it. Man, wow. Thank you for that. That's, that means the world coming from someone like you. President Falwell, we're hearing from one side of the partnership, but obviously you saw this as a great opportunity for our students to be involved with a world-class organization. We'd love to hear a little bit more about how you made the decision to partner uh, with, with Rick, but then also I know ultimately you made the decision to have Brian kind of wear our you know, be, wear our uniform, just kind of represent us uh, as a school as well. Tell us how those decisions came about. Uh, William's parents are here, um, Bill and Dana Byron. If you guys would stand up, put the lights on them or whatever you do. Let's welcome them to the house. Glad you're here. Thank you all. I got to know William, I, I mean, Bill was 15, 20, I don't know, 15 years or so ago. I was um, general counsel for Liberty. He helped us put together a package of life insurance owned by Liberty on my father's life that eventually paid Liberty $85 million. And he was just a genius in, 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 in being able to put that together, even though my dad was at an advanced age. And it helped this university become debt free right after his death. And then that's one of the, that was sort of the, the kickstart we needed to do what what we've done the last 10 years and build Liberty into one of only 70 private universities in the country that's rated AA by Standard and Poor's and Moody's. We've been able to build reserves for the future. It'll guarantee we'll be able to continue to, to, to carry out our mission of training champions for Christ for not just decades, but for generations. And that's what any school has to have if it's going to survive, any private school. And so that's, um, Bill played a big role in that. So when he came to me, and he said, hey, I got a kid who can drive. I believed him because he had already proven himself. And he, uh, just from day, day one, we, it was a big risk for us because it's, we, we had never really done a big sponsorship of a race car before. But, um, but he proved himself. It's incredible how fast he's moved from level to level to level and just keeps winning and winning and winning. I, I, I went to the race and I just don't see how he does it. He gets out in front and... He just stays there. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. But, but it's, uh, but we're just so proud of him and, and, the, uh, and the dealership program, Dan DeHaas, that Rick mentioned, is my wife's sister's brother-in-law. That's the distant relationship I mentioned earlier. But, but he told us, he said, uh, Rick just loves Liberty graduates and, and uh, Brandon Apon's 
brother is here. I saw him driving a little gator behind us this morning. He's around here somewhere. Isaac, wave it. Wave it, everybody. He's trying to find a, a wife, so I'm trying to help him out a little bit. But, but, uh, but anyway, it's, I don't know where he is. Bad time to disappear, Isaac. But anyway, it's, uh, we just are so, pre- the, Byron, the Byron family's just been so, so uh, good for Liberty to work with, and, and now we're so thrilled to get to know Rick, and we, we uh, started this automotive dealership management program in our business school, and um, the, Dean Scott Hicks and his predecessor put the, put, put the curriculum together. It's going to include two eight-week internships at one of your dealers for all the students, and, and it's, um, I think it's going to produce some... Uh, it's going to make you a lot of money. It's going to produce you a lot of, uh, <laughs> a lot of uh, quality employees. And when he really starts winning big time like Jeff did, I'm going to hit him up for a lot of money too. So, <laughs> anyway. You, you know, William, I, I didn't, I, I was going to tell this, but I met William when he was about 14. And uh, he said one day he wanted to drive for us. And then he went into late models. But and he went the truck series and just set the world on fire. But when people ask me what's so impressive about William, when I sat down with him, he went to the, one of the toughest schools in Charlotte, and he was an honor student in his senior year. He won the K&N series division for the East Coast. He became an Eagle Scout, and he took online courses at this university. All, any one of those things would be pretty impressive. But to do all four of them in his senior year was unbelievable. And his, his whole attitude about life and dedication to his sport or whatever he does, it's just amazing. I, 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 when I talked to he and his dad, uh, before they walked out of the house, I said, I want you to be a part of our future because you're special. And he's a special person and he's got a tremendous amount of talent. And uh, it's just going to be amazing to see how far he can, he can go. And, and I just remember, like yesterday, when you were that age, you're way past that now. You know? Yes, I am. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, but William's special, and uh, we're so excited because he's just such a role model for young people and for just to show folks that if you have the will and the desire to do something and you just go for it. You can accomplish unbelievable things. William, I, I want to kind of dive into that just a second. You know, you, uh, the first time you came here, uh, just last year, not a lot of us knew a lot about you. And then like, like you just heard about yourself from these men, it just took off for you. And all of a sudden you become a guy that Earnhardt Jr. is tweeting about. And every time I turn on ESPN, you're on there and, uh, and you're just making great strides in the sport. But all of that gives you a bigger and bigger platform for Christ. All of that's giving you a bigger and bigger opportunity to really be an arrow that points to someone else. And that's what I love about you. More than wanting to be famous, you're interested in being faithful. And I want to hear just about your faith. You represent liberty, and you do that well. We're grateful. But you, you represent Christ. You're a bigger ambassador for Him. And whether you're winning or not, you're a champion. Because, because Christ lives in you and lives through you, buddy. So tell us about your faith. How'd you come to know the Lord? And, and what does your faith mean to you now as all of a sudden paying your bills isn't an issue anymore? Uh, managing the blessings becomes the new frontier for you. Yeah, you know, I was, um, I grew up in, in a church as a kid, but really the connection for me was when I was um, 15 or 16 years old and started racing, and, and uh, there's a lot of distractions that come with that. There's a lot of, anytime you play any sport, there's a lot of people that, um, you know, go off in different ways. So I feel like um, Liberty came along right at the perfect time. I was racing in late models, and, and uh, we came up here and, and gave Mr. Fall a presentation, and, and uh, he said to, to go through with it, and, and I think that was the turning point for me and my faith was just to, um, to partner with them and understand what this place is all about and, and the uh, charisma and the enthusiasm that's here. It's, uh, it's different than any other college. You feel comfortable here. It's, you know, I made a lot of friends last year when I was on campus, and uh, that grew my faith a lot. So uh, there's those things, and then there's also 
at the racetrack, we have MRO, which does a chapel service after the driver's meetings, and, and they've grown close to me through the last couple of years, and, and also I keep a Bible verse on my dash um, through each race. So um, just things like that keep you close in your faith, and, and really this place in general has, has um, allowed me to grow and, and become closer to Christ. That's awesome, brother. We're praying for you as you just go out there. And again, win or lose, we, we, we think that um, you're just a great testimony for what you're doing. Hey, Jeff, I know you came to uh, really just uh, champion our, 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 you know, the new guy on the team, uh, but we, we would be bad stewards if we didn't ask you, a legend, you know, about some of your favorite memories. How'd you get started in racing? And give us the highlight of your career. It might be a surprise to us. Uh, it, it's a, a moment that you really think about and go, that's the moment I'll never forget. Uh, probably the, the day I sat in front of Rick Hendrick at his office and he uh, showed interest in hiring me to be his driver. But uh, yeah, I started racing at a very young age. I'm originally from California, the Bay Area of California, which, yeah, I love it. I, I know there's nobody from Vallejo here, <laughs> but um, yeah, an area that traditionally wasn't known to be a real racing area, certainly not NASCAR. Uh, but my parents got me in, involved, my stepfather primarily, uh, quarter midgets, go-karts at a young age, and that took me back to the Midwest in Indiana where I started racing uh, sprint cars and midgets and short tracks uh, through the Midwest. And, and of course, then I realized I wanted to be a race car driver. Um, I, very much like William, I, I'm in high school, and you know, my whole world was all about racing. That's all I wanted to do. Uh, you know, I was doing similar things that William did, or talking to teachers and, 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 and you know, people at the school saying, uh, I'm going to have to leave a little early today because I need to go to a race. I might be back late uh, on, on Monday because I'm going to be traveling. And to have people recognize that that's your passion in life and, and support you, that was huge for me. So that happened in Indiana. That wasn't happening in California, but it did happen in Indiana. And then my, my career just continued to, uh, to do well. And I, I started hearing more and more about NASCAR. And I, was, I thought I was going to be an open wheel driver, but uh, NASCAR's popularity started taking off. And I, had, I happened to get a chance to drive a stock car to a track in North Carolina uh, at Rockingham. And I just loved it. I fell in love with it. And I, I knew right then, this is what I want to do. And I had that chance, um, you know, to, to, to fulfill that dream. And the rest is kind of history. As far as a highlight for me, I think because I, I lived in Indiana, went to high school in Indiana, raced all around Indiana, and thought that I was going to maybe hopefully race at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway uh, one day, I got a chance to race there but it was in a stock car when NASCAR went there for the very first time in their inaugural event in 1994 and just so happened to win that race. And that, that changed my life forever. Man. <laughs> uh, I think one of, the, one of the ways that I'm reminded that you're just a, a, a big deal is the other night I was watching the fight, you know, the Mayweather fight and on pay-per-view, which was hundred bucks for me is a lot of money. You're loaded, so that's I wish I you. wish I'd paid a hundred bucks to be there. <laughs> no, you went to the thing, so I'm watching the thing, and then you're right there, ringside. How was it being at that fight? It was amazing. Uh, I mean, it was just electrifying that the crowd and the the, the, the you know the, the build up to that event. I'd never been to a boxing event. I, I've been to a lot of really cool events around uh, the world, and and you know I. Uh, uh, I've been reading all the hype about it, and at first I thought, well, there's no way the hype's going to live up to the the reality. But um, had an opportunity to go, and so me and my wife went out there. And you know, it's funny when when I walked in here and you guys were were starting the the program, and I saw all those glow sticks. I, I got a chance to see Calvin Harris while I was out there the night before the fight. And oh my, yeah, and the glow. I wish I would have brought one of those glow sticks. They're about this big that they hand out in that crowd, but uh, pretty amazing. But it reminded me a lot of what you guys were doing. But the fight itself was, yeah, it's just. Uh, 
the, the energy, I, I, like I said, I've never been to one. I guess I picked a good one you know, to, to, to go to as my first one. Um, and it, you know, it was a who's who uh, of people that were there. But just the, the, the buildup of the event and then during, you know, to feel the crowd. That's one thing we miss out in, in the race. On a night race, you get a chance to see flash bulbs or now you see camera phones and their lights go on and you kind of know there's some cool action happening because of that. Typically, you don't re you, you're going 190 miles an hour. You can't really pay attention to, to the crowd. You certainly can't hear them because of the noise of the race car. But you kind of know that things are happening out there when you're doing something, maybe a pass for the lead. But in a fight, it's amazing how you can feed off the energy. And that's what I noticed is, um, you know, as, as they got closer to, say, round nine, when, when McGregor started wearing down and, and, and Mayweather started, you know, kind of doing what he does so well, and it was time for him to, to kind of strike. And in this thing, the crowd reaction, and it, it was as if it, energy just came from them into Mayweather, and he just, it was on. And, and then the next round, boom, it was over. Uh, and so to feel that, to be there live, to experience that, is something I'll, I'll never forget. Uh, I want to ask President Falwell just a quick question. Uh, you, obviously, we do this uh, We the Champion campaign, and we're launching it out today. I know you were a big part of that from, from ground up. And one of the things that we noticed is that champions champion champions. Like these, these men came because you texted and said, hey, we're gonna make the big announcement. Can he come? Can you tell us a little bit more about this campaign? And I think he's such a great example of a champion who represents Christ, represents us, and tells our story. We'd love to hear a little bit more about the champion campaign before well, we pray. It's, it's we the champions, a takeoff of we the people in the, in the Constitution, and that's sort of where the marketing folks got their idea, and they get all the credit. They came up with it. But uh, it was so kind of Rick and Jeff, because it was only two or three weeks ago that I texted Rick and said, could you and Jeff come up? And um, here they are today. And I. I love two o'clock combo. I could get used to this. What do, what, what do you guys think? Uh, That's because you sleep in. We got to get up early and come to work. You, know? you got a better crowd at two o'clock. Look, That's because of the gas. It's but, mandatory, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> but they want to be here. It's, it's an awesome thing. That's awesome. No, but was, we're so honored that they, they made the trip on such short, short notice. And we already had William schedule. We wanted to sort of kick off the, the campaign because he's one of the leading champions from Liberty right now and he's uh, Rashad Jennings was trying to make it here too and he, he just at the last minute wasn't able to make it but but we, uh, we, we just couldn't have a better way to start the school year and um, we're so grateful to you both for all three of you for being here. Absolutely. Before we, before we close in prayer can we just again thank them for just making time for us. And, yeah, absolutely. If, if I could just real quick, uh, I'll, be, I'll be brief, and, and I really thought of it when I was hearing William speak, and I'm sure you feel this, but I feel this in this whole room of something that's really special that's going on here. And, and, and as Rick said, we need more people like what's gathered in this room. We need more William Byrons who are passionate about something, able to live out his dream, but good things happen to good people. And, and this is one, one good young man who's gonna go on to do great things. If you take anything from today, take that, that you can do amazing things if, if you strive for it and, and do it by being a good person. So that's all I had to say. Thank you for that's having me. We've got a gift. We've got a gift for uh, Jerry. I think, let me get this real quick. So it's uh, might know what it is. It's a, oh, okay. Open it up there. Right. It's kind of like the helmet we gave you last time. That's Jeff Gordon bottle of wine. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's the Liberty number nine car, and it's that's it identi this year. Identical to the one you drive, right? Yeah, identical to the one we race. So, uh, hopefully, you can have that in the office with the helmet uh, we gave you a couple years ago. We appreciate so. it so much. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. This is one of the fun things about my day job is we we set up a great combo schedule, and then we just happen to have a 
I would have a boss who has friends in high places, and thank you for texting them, inviting them to come and be a part of this. How can we, uh, how can we pray for you? Uh, you know, I would just love to hear just a prayer request before we, uh, we close in, in, in this time. I would just uh, pray for Houston and, and kind of all, all the things going on around the world. I mean, what we're doing is fun and it's exciting and, um, you know, everything's a lot, of, a lot of fun as we keep going through the year. So I would just pray for Houston and, and kind of the things that are going on there. Same on that. Absolutely. Let's do that together. Let's come before the Lord. Th- Lord, thank you again. For these men, and um, all glory comes to you. Lord, we certainly honor a brother, and we thank you, Lord, that he becomes an example, a life worthy of imitation. There are principles that were even said out loud today that will apply to any field of vocation, and um, we thank you for that wisdom. All wisdom flows down from you. Certainly, God, all glory goes to you for what you've done in and through this young man. We pray that you would protect him and um, guard his heart. Lord, um, bigger levels, bigger devils. And so, Lord, just protect him against the enemy. We pray right now, Lord, for what's happening again in Texas. And we pray for provision. We pray for protection. Lord, we pray for just awareness that people that are looking for people in homes will find them. They, They won't miss anyone. People that are waiting We'll find water, we'll find supplies. Lord, I pray for the the local church there to be really the salt, really the the light, really, Father, even in the middle of all of that, um, the dispenser of hope. Lord, we pray specifically right now for our president. Thank you, God, for Jerry and Becky and their commitment to this university, for training up champions uh, like William to, to create an environment where even people like William can go online and and be able to do both things at one. Thank you for the, at the same time, thank you for the uniqueness of this place. I pray that the Rick and Jeff leave this place and that they would have felt refreshed, that they would have sensed something different, that they would know that we're for them. We pray for them as well. We love you, Lord. Thank you for this great year. We look ahead for even the best year of our life. Amen. Amen. Okay, again, let's just thank these men. Thank you all so much. It's an honor to have you.